Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Road to Rio from 1947. And this is continuing my series where I review all of the Road movies, starring Bob Hope, Bing Crosby, and Dorothy L'Amour. Road to Rio came out a year after Road to Utopia, a little more than a year. Road to Utopia came out in February of 1946, and Road to Rio came out in December, or on Christmas, apparently, of 1947. But the way films were released at that time, probably most people saw it in 1948. And films were released gradually, but still, they were released one right after the other. But Road to Utopia was, of course, shot much earlier in Road to Rio was shot pretty much right after Road to Utopia came out. So you could think there's probably a big difference between the two. Even though they're released close together, the production time between the two is quite different. One thing about this film that I definitely noticed is, although it is a really entertaining movie, although it is a really great road picture, although it has a really great comedy director, Norman McLeod, like McLeod, his name will be up below, of course, because I can't say anything. It's still a very fun, enjoyable, Hollywood comedy. It still has great charisma from Bob Hope and Bing Crosby. It's still very funny. I laughed really hard. Some jokes laughed harder than the road movies I like a lot more than this, but it does feel like the pendulum shifted where they get wilder and crazier and kind of more off the cuff and you never know exactly what's going to happen and surrealer and weirder with Road to Morocco and then lesser Road to Utopia. And by the time you get to Road to Rio, it feels just like a big Hollywood comedy. Although it still has some like ridiculous gags in it that are absolutely hilarious still has nonsensical surreal ideas going on in it it's just not as off the wall and crazy great as like something like road to morocco and you're seeing like the pendulum shift the other way basically that's definitely noted when i watch road to rio certainly the budget's a lot bigger it feels a little more conservative artistically it still has that spirit in it and i guess in a way you couldn't make a road movie without having that spirit that wouldn't have sold as well but it does feel like a little more controlled and like they know how to make a road picture as much as they start to understand the basics that the series needs to have they always put a different weirder slant on it whether they had a weird narrator studio head person or road to morocco's cheapness and kind of off the cuffness but road to rio almost feels like they exactly know what they're doing to a point it doesn't feel as fun and crazy anymore but it's kind of similar to how i felt when i saw road to utopia where it's like this is still a really funny movie i still had a really good time i was still really entertained but it just doesn't have that same kind of energy and Road to Rio that energy seems to be lessening but the humor and the laughs are still absolutely there and you're still going to have an amazing time while watching it. Two vaudevillians Scat Sweeney played by Bing Crosby and Hot Lips Barton played by Bob Hope the first time he hasn't had a really embarrassing name in this series so of course he gets a name like Hot Lips which is both really cool and really embarrassing so I guess it kind of worked out. And they're going from town to town like always getting into trouble and having to leave each town from getting into trouble like before and then they're in a carnival and Bing Crosby has signed Bob Hope up to do the high wire act on a bike but unfortunately he burns the carnival down which they kind of did in another movie it was the one with the human bullet thing it happened before it's gonna bug me whatever they hop onto a ship of course and they meet the distraught Lucia who is of course played by Dorothy L'Amour who is trying to attempt suicide by jumping off the ship but Bing Crosby and Bob Hope stop her and start hanging out with her but then she sells them out and tells the ship captain that they are stowaways which of course they are she's obviously being hypnotized by her crooked guardian Catherine Vale hypnotism is a big thing in this movie after being on the boat and having all sorts of crazy stuff and then they go to Rio and get into a series of misadventures and have a really hilarious gag with a bunch of musicians who of course can't speak English but they tell the guy they can and are hopefully trying to stop Lucia from being hypnotized by her guardian and be hypnotized to force to marry her guardian's brother who's not her uncle they explain that and of course get away with it and make a lot of money and win the girl this film is directed by norman mcleod i think his name i'm gonna mess up but he had directed horse feathers and monkey business for the marx brothers and this same year actually directed the secret life of walter mitty which is a really great comedy the first version of it with danny k he's probably the most experienced comedy director to ever do a bob hope and bing crosby road movie so you'd think this would probably be a little zanier especially because looking at road to utopia or looking 
looking at Road to Morocco. As I'm watching these in order, it's hard not to compare them. But I still think he does a really good job and you can tell an experienced comedy director and you have an experienced comedy team working on this and it works very well. And I do think there's a lot of great moments like the horses charging to save Dorothy Lamour that literally goes nowhere. Like at the end, they go, we didn't get there, but it was exciting, wasn't it? I keep reading in a lot of these reviews how surreal it is. And what's interesting about it is these are Hollywood comedies, basically. These are mainstream, everywhere Hollywood comedies. And they have surreal moments in them. And the reason like most people didn't pick up on it because they were so much fun, they didn't care. And I think that's the thing with Road to Rio. And that's the why these movies work so well is even what isn't the greatest entry is still very, very funny. Even reviews at the time go, look, it's not the greatest comedy ever but some of the laughs and it particularly like there's a point where lucy is about to jump off the boat and they save her and you go no we don't want you to jump off they'll blame us but just go back to your room and shoot yourself so nobody will get hurt and that's like really dark but really hilarious bob hope especially is just very funny in this movie bob hope is like almost the star to me in all these although bing crosby is very good in this as well bob hope and bing crosby actually paid for two-thirds of this movie with paramount pictures the last three road movies were all financed by both bing crosby bob hope and the studio so they would get a bigger percentage of the profits which is actually like really smart if you ever wondered like Tom Cruise does that now that's why he makes a ton of money off the Mission Impossible movies they clearly realized that so they decided to help finance the films I don't know if that affected the production and I can't find much about how that affected production I think it was more of a financial idea I'm sure they didn't get paid up front but they made a ton because these films were huge blockbusters at the time the interesting thing is Dorothy Lamour was not one of the financiers I don't know if that's because she was making significantly less which is probably true not because she's a lesser talent because of sexism and such but also it's interesting this is probably her weaker performance in it because of the hypnotism plot which I don't really love the whole hypnotism thing it's like the whole thing even in the recent Avengers movie with Jeremy Renner's character it's like you're sacrificing that actor's performance because this weird hypnotism thing because nobody's like oh hypnotism I can relate to that like she's not herself a lot of the time like you can relate to her but it just feels like she's stifled by this whole idea and it still gets a lot of gag through really but I like the chemistry between all three of them. Dorothy Lamore is very beautiful and everything in this but she's just kind of played like she's the girl in the group not that she's like kind of an equal like she usually is. And there's some complaints about particularly the ending with the hypnotism and Bob Hope how that's a really unfortunate joke. It was kind of done in jest but it isn't I mean, it is a little creepy. They really kind of sacrificed that character for that. I'm wondering if because they were in charge, her role was lessened and their roles were brought out more, possibly. Since I haven't seen the other two they've produced yet, I'm curious what exactly those are like. Obviously, she was cut out of Road to Hong Kong, so maybe they did want to sacrifice her part for their own. I don't know, but, you know, I'm just conspiracy theory, I guess. Norman McLeod, who had directed Marx Brothers movies before this, uses one gag, the gag with the shaving was was from a Marx Brothers movie. I think it's from Monkey Business, I think. But it was used in a film before that and he had done the exact same gag so clearly he knew how to shot it. That's one of the more memorable sequences in the movie is where you have these three locals who are actually the Weir Brothers. I'm not sure what that is, who they were. They had two groups of siblings. They had the Weir Brothers and the Andrews Sisters. The Andrews Sisters sequence is really cool. They kind of just show up and leave. It's a little weird but I had so much fun with it. That's the thing about these movies. They can really get away with a lot because of charisma and you're having such a good time and later you're like, wait, that didn't work. But it, I laughed so that's fine that's kind of the road movies in a nutshell maybe the sequence of the Ware brothers where none of them can speak English and Bing Crosby teach them each a phrase so they can trick the guy who wants an American band and one of them says you're telling me the other says you're in the groove Jackson and the third one says this is murder just because of a mistake Bob Hope makes and they have some really funny scenes with those guys and it does feel a little Marx Brothers esque I will say it's like very very funny apparently a lot of reviews I read because these played a lot on TV and anyone who's a baby boomer who wrote a review this seems to say like they always did this gag to mess with their teachers in high school i never heard of this before but i th i think that's like a really funny gag to, to fuck with people Sometimes gags, like particularly Marx Brothers gags or Marx Brothers-esque gags, it's funnier just to see the stamina of the gag. Wow, this is just, this is going to keep going and keep going. This is absolutely hilarious. A lot of the songs in it are a little more fun in this. The Andrew Sisters song was a big hit, actually. It feels like they always had a big hit song off of all these movies. Road Trio feels like the series is understanding what it needs to do, and that doesn't feel like something that's as earth-shattering as it once was 
was, but I guess when you get with sequels for films that like change the game or do something completely different and original, they almost have to be a little more constrained. But with the idea of the galloping horses that they kept cutting to or the idea of the Weir Brothers doing that bit, there's certainly some really hilarious, really funny gags in this or like them putting the instruments in the hotel room or like the cigarette that you, you gotta light and then someone shoots it and suddenly his cigarette's lit. Just like very, very funny sequences and I think because they had such a good director, they had such great stars with such great chemistry, it kind of works for itself but it's kind of like the series is turning where in Road to Zanzibar they took a script that's cliched that the studio didn't want to make because it was too cliched and too much like Stanley and Livingston I believe, I presume. <laughs> they have turned around where they're actually just making a cliched film. Like they're not parodying something as much, they're actually taking a cliched plot and putting all their gags within that and it works but it just doesn't have the kind of same energy. I know people kind of don't celebrate the road movies once you get later in them and draw lines at certain points with the series. I'm not going to say Road to Rio is a bad movie. I think if you want to have a really good time and laugh and have a glass of wine and watch a Bob Hope and Bing Crosby movie, Road to Rio is definitely going to do that. You're going to have a really really fun time. Road to Morocco especially, most of these movies I'm just going to go, Road to Morocco is the greatest and it is but the reason that movie is the greatest is because it was so funny it was so different that's why people like even something like Deadpool recently it's like it's a different flavor to it and Road to Rio it's like you're taking that different flavor that different thing and making that different thing ordinary and that's what you're seeing with Road to Rio it still has moments that are still unexpected that are still funny it still has that energy in it but that energy has not become as unexpected because you are in fact expecting the unexpected making the unexpected actually expected so it's not unexpected anymore. Road Trio is a really funny comedy but you're just basically seeing the road movies starting to become a genre, starting to have rules to them, starting to have exact certain things. But the interesting thing is the gags aren't the same things. They're at least understanding that. But the fact that it's using like a similar plot that I've seen in other ones, that it diminishes Dorothy L'Amour, Road to Rio is a really good fun comedy and you'll laugh and you'll have a good time. It just doesn't live up to the legacy of the previous probably three in the franchise. But I still had a really fun time and I think when you're watching these films that's really what they're trying to come across. They really want to have the audience laughing and entertained. On its basic audience level it succeeds so well it's ridiculous so you're honestly not going to know it and you'll probably be quoting this film. It's maybe a little more quotable and memorable than Road to Utopia but it's not as interesting and rule breaking as Road to Utopia and I guess that's a debate you can have with yourself. Do you want to see Bob Home and Bing Crosby movie break the rules and do something different or do you want to have a good time and when they were making Road to Rio, clearly they chose the latter, and in some cases, I'm actually glad they did. So if you have seen Road to Rio and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. Check out my Road Movies or Road 2 Movies Review playlist. I have reviewed all of the Road Movies up until Road to Rio. And if you're watching this much later, I have reviewed all the Road Movies. And you can watch all those in a handy little annotation that will be below. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.